Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Mitsubishi Electric Wino seminar about TSN, Time Sensitive Networking. My name is Misha Heidlager, together with uh, John Broward from the CLPA. We will be hosting this webinar. Uh, before we start, John, can we get the next slide, please? Um, sure. A brief explanation of the go-to webinar menu. Uh, it might be minimized, mi oh, sorry, minimized, but you can easily expand or drag parts of the menu. I would like to ask, if you'd like to ask a question during our session, you can do so via the menu item questions. We will answer these questions after the presentation. During the presentation, you can, of course, place all the questions in the question window. Um, if you would like to do it in Dutch, that's also possible. No problem there. Um, if we can't answer the uh, questions immediately, uh, we will answer them after the seminar by email or phone. I hope you enjoyed today's session. And now we will start. Um, okay, well, I would like to introduce John Broward from the CLPA. He will start this session and tell us a little bit more about TSN. Take it away, John. Okay, thank you very much, Misha. So, um, as, as he said, um, I am John Browett. I'm the general manager of the CC Link Partner Association in Europe. And uh, so, what we've got for you today is a short overview about time sensitive networking, TSN, and um, CC Link, i.e., TSN. So um, the agenda is right here, so you, you can see what we're going to cover today. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about TSN and why it's important, how does it work, and so on. Then we'll cover the implementation of TSN, uh, CCLink IE TSN. We'll look a little bit about what industries it can benefit. Um, we'll look at um, what TSN-based solutions are available right now. And then we'll finish with a question and answer session. So uh, please uh, give us your questions in the question and answer box there on the uh, webinar window. And uh, we'll answer those when we get to the end. Okay, so uh, just before we get going, uh, let's just give you a quick background on who we are, the CC Link Partner Association. So um, in a nutshell, we're the organization that's responsible for the uh, technical development and promotion of the CC Link family of open automation networks. So um, what that means is we, we've been around now for about 20 years, just over 20 years, and uh, we were started back in 2000 when the original CC Link field bus technology was passed over to us from Mitsubishi Electric, who was the original developer of it. And as you can see there, now we're a very diverse group of uh, different organizations. And um, as you'll see, um, we're the guys who are behind all the different CC Link networks. So let's uh, look very quickly about how well accepted CC Link technologies are around the world. So um, we've um, pretty much established a technology leadership in the industrial automation industry. Um, we were the first to introduce open gigabit ethernet for automation. And then we also introduced time sensitive networking on top of that. Um, over the past few years, we've been experiencing double digit growth of the organization, as you can see there in the charts. And, and what this means is really in the end that um, we have worldwide acceptance of, of our network technologies. Um, right now, we've got an installed base of around 30 million devices worldwide. And there's about 4,000 members in the association. And as you can see there, there's over 2,000 products available from over 350 manufacturers. So very widely accepted globally. So, um, just a little bit of background before we get into the whole time sensitive networking thing. Um, so what is driving automation today? Um, well, as you can see here, around the world, there's a number of different initiatives going on which are intended to help manage processes better by extracting more information from them, acting on that information, and then producing actionable information which can then be fed back into the process to optimize it and run it better. And it's known by different things, different names around the world, but um, here in Europe, we tend to call it Industry 4.0. So that's really the, the key driver behind what we're talking about today. So um, how, how does time-sensitive networking, uh, how does it help Industry 4.0? Well, basically, the key point is transparency. We need to be able to, if, if we're able to manage 
processes better, we need to understand what they're doing better. And to do that, we need to see what they're doing. And that's really the topic of transparency. Once we can see what our processes are doing in a better way, we can better understand them and we can better manage them. So one of the things that transparency depends on is network convergence. The idea that we can get as much information out of the shop floor as possible in the easiest way, share it between shop floor devices and also share it between the operational technology area, the shop floor itself, and the IT systems that run that. So as we'll see as we go through this presentation, TSM will actually allow us to develop this network convergence and actually deliver the kind of transparency that we're looking for with Industry 4.0. Alongside that, um, as, we, as we're going forward, we're seeing that Industry 4.0 is creating a huge amount of data coming out of the shop floor now. More devices are producing more data, and it's necessary to take this data and do something with it so that we can get the kind of insights that we're looking for. And obviously, the more data there's going to be, the more capacity we will need in the network. So therefore, by having gigabit bandwidth, we'll have that capacity too. So let's kick things off with a little poll. So um, I think you'll see there on your screens, you've got a little window there that um, asks you this question. So um, if you can just click on the answer that you believe is closest to your opinion, um, we'll take a look at that and then we can move on. I'll just give you a few seconds to do that. Oh, I see. Sorry, I need to click the launch button here, don't I? There we go. Sorry. Okay. Well, it seems like uh, quite a few of you at least know something about it. That's good. Eighty-five percent voted. Okay, we've got thirty seconds. If uh, any of you haven't voted yet, want to vote? Ninety-two percent voted. I guess there's a couple of guys who maybe haven't decided yet. Okay, well, I think maybe everybody's voted now, so um, I will uh, close that poll. So it looks like um, most of you at least have heard about um, time-sensitive networking. So um, that's a good start, I guess. Okay, well, let's continue with the presentation. I assume you can still all see my screen now. Um, now we're going back to the presentation. So um, let's just take a quick look at what time-sensitive networking is. So um, it's defined by a group of IEEE 802.1 standards. As, as you may know, uh, the IEEE is defined Ethernet in general as a technology. And what the 802.1 standards do is that they, um, they make standard Ethernet deterministic. And what that does is that it provides the foundation for network convergence. So how does it do that? Well, there's two key standards. Um, there's one called IEEE 802.1 AS and another one called 802.1 QBV. And together they, um, they work with time synchronization and scheduling, the scheduling of network traffic. And applying those two things together Onto, net, onto Ethernet allows multiple traffic types to share the same network and therefore delivers the convergence that we're looking for that uh, will provide the transparency that we need. So first of all, let's uh, just take a quick look at what time synchronization means in this instance. So as, as you can see there on the diagram, um, the idea is that all the devices on the network have a shared time base. So basically they, they all know exactly what time it is at any given moment and that time is common to all of them. 
So if it's 10 a.m., they all know it's 10 a.m. So that's what the 802.1 AS standard does. And, and really what, what the key point here is, is that by making sure everything's running essentially on the same schedule, then it gives you um, precise control of what's called latency and jitter. So latency is the delay it takes to have traffic move across the network. And jitter is the variability in that delay. So basically, if you can control latency and jitter in a precise way, you therefore get very predictable flow of network traffic. And as a result, that basically forms determinism in the sense that things will happen exactly when you need them to happen and you know exactly when they are going to happen. The other part of the puzzle is the QBV standard and that's, um, that's to do with the scheduling of traffic on the network. So basically what this is, is you have um, a number of time slots that you can define and they basically prioritize what traffic has access to the network when. And um, these are divided into different queues and each queue has a different priority. So basically, for example, emergency stops, for example, would have a higher priority than maybe the frames from a machine vision system, the video frames. So what would happen is um, somebody hits an e-stop and that has a very high priority on the network. But if maybe there's a vision system that's sending a video frame maybe once a second or something, then that has a lower priority. And so therefore, by, by prioritizing things in this way, it allows everything to share the network and not get in each other's way. So therefore, again, it helps to achieve determinism. So what does this mean for the user? Um, so, well, basically that it, it delivers kind of three key points here. Um, the first one is that you can take your automation network traffic. So maybe you've got like IO states, motion control, safety devices, and so on. And, and we've been able to do that in the past with like, for example, CC Link IE already combined those kinds of traffic together. But now by adding TSN, we now can also add other device traffic to the network. So for example, barcode readers and printers, for example, who maybe don't really use an automation network per se, but they, they use TCP IP traffic to communicate. We can now combine all those things together on the same network. So therefore now, we have more flexibility and we're starting to arrive at this convergence that we talked about. Uh, taking that one step further, um, you know, obviously, although we're focused on CC Link, i.e. TSN today, we know that there are other network technologies out there. So for example, you know, if you had a system where you were wanting to combine perhaps, for example, CC Link, i.e. TSN, and maybe something like Profinet, for example, in theory, that's also possible by using this kind of technology. And then the final point is, as you can see on the uh, right side of the screen there, this is also is going to give you an easier way to converge the IT and OT levels of, of an enterprise. So, you know, you've got what's happening in the shop floor. You can take that data out. You can look at it. You can act on it. You can produce results. You can send it back and so on. So, you know, the cloud is getting very crucial in, in manufacturing these days. And, and then this will help to combine that too. So just to look at a quick example of how this might work in an operational technology point of view, so on the shop floor itself. So um, we've got um, different devices and, and different traffic on the same network here. So um, what you can see here, we've got the blue devices, are, are the actual automation parts, and then the red devices are maybe devices which are not actually using automation traffic per se. So what's happening is the blue traffic is on a and is, is on a regular cycle and that's going round and round on a on a regular cycle. And then what you've got on top of that is the red items and they're maybe doing a, a transient communication cycle and they are sending the um, the traffic as and when it occurs. So what you can see here is that. Um, the blue traffic continues uninterrupted and the red traffic comes and goes on top of that. And as a result, they don't interfere with each other. They can share the same network and performance is maintained. And then taking this one step further, as, as we mentioned earlier, um, we also now have the ability to have a, a single transparent architecture that pretty much goes all the way down from the sensor level 
up to the cloud. So as you can see here, we've got all the different automation systems on the factory floor, and then you can put those together in a very flat network and send that data to an edge server and then to the cloud. So basically what, what's happening here is there's, there's lots of data coming out of the shop floor. Um, we don't necessarily need to look at every single tiny piece of data from an analytical point of view. So therefore the edge server kind of sits at the edge there. It decides what's important, what isn't. It feeds that up to the cloud. The systems there that look at the data, process it, provide the manufacturing insights that we need sends that back down to the edge server and then back out to the shop floor and then then we get the optimization that we need and that's all happening because of the transparency this is enabling so in the end this is all fine and good and so we've got this new shiny technology and and so great how, how is it actually going to help our business because you know in the end if we're not improving our business we we're not really making the progress we need you know at the end of the day it's all about making more money and uh, if we're not doing that then we maybe won't be in business forever so what, what are the business benefits of all this well first of all it enables simpler network architectures and machine designs you know if what you can imagine is that if you've got a machine that's got multiple different networks on it to do different things like maybe one for motion control one for vision one for normal io control and so on that's, that creates a lot of complexity and cost and engineering time to set that up and maintain it and troubleshoot it and so on. So by turning this all into a single network, you, you get a lot of benefits that way, as you can probably see. We've already talked about how also it's going to make it easier to get the OT level information out of the machinery and do something with it to, to do that, to, to get better transparency. So therefore, that ties into the third point where having the greater process transparency will mean we can manage those processes better and therefore we can run them more effectively and basically more productivity which would be the final point you know the more we can make the more we can get paid basically the more responsive we are to our customers so that leads us on to the second poll so um i just now need to go over here and uh select that and launch it so if you just want to give me your opinion about um, whether you think tsn could be beneficial for your applications uh, based on what you've seen so far okay i'm getting a pretty positive uh, response on this it seems like a lot of you think it probably can help Five percent voted. Yeah, it seems the yes is in the clear majority right now. Fifty five percent of you believe it probably could be beneficial, so that's great. Okay, well, that's pretty much everybody voted, so I'll close that for now. Okay, and then... Okay, can you all still see my screen again? I think everybody can, right? So, um, let's, uh, let's move on to um, what is CC-Link IETSN. So basically what, what CC-Link IE TSN is, is that we've taken um, CC-Link IE, our existing gigabit open industrial ethernet, and we have added TSM functionality to it. So basically, for those of you who are familiar with CC-Link IE, it's pretty much the same thing as you were already familiar with, but now it can also do TSN as well. And by doing that, of course, um, it delivers the convergence that we've been talking about. Um, and so now we can combine what's going on with CC-Link IE with pretty much any other kind of ethernet traffic. So um, when it comes to CC-Link IE TSM, there, there's really three key areas that kind of describe its features and benefits. So they are performance, connectivity, 
and intelligence. So we'll take a look at those one by one here. So when it comes to performance, um, what, what that comes down to really is these three key points here, which you know we, we've pretty much covered the idea of these already, but this is how it applies in the specific case of CCLink IETSN. So as we said, um, in the past with CCLink IE, we, also, we already had the capability to have IO, motion and safety traffic all together on the same network. But then by having TSN on board, now we can also add in those other traffic types like we talked about, such as TCP IP. But then the other key point here is that because we're, again, um, extending the capabilities of CCLink IE, we still have the gigabit bandwidth that we had before. So as we saw earlier, as, as the amount of data is increasing because of uh, the demands of Industry 4.0 and so on, we have the bandwidth and the capacity available to handle that data. When it comes to connectivity, um, again, three key points here. Um, the, the first is that, um, first of all, CCLink IETSN is an open technology. So that means it's not going to restrict you to one vendor. And basically, anybody who wants to join the CLPA as a company can do that. And then they get access to the technology and they can build whichever devices they feel they need to offer to the market. So this means there's going to be more freedom of choice than compared to a single vendor solution, of course. But then the, the connectivity works in other ways too. Um, you know, with having this openness, it allows anybody to develop a device for the network and connect it to the network. And also, not only is it going to open up the freedom of choice and the variety of devices available, but also, as we saw earlier, in theory at least, if you want to run this alongside other network protocols, such as Profinet or something, for example, um, that's also a possibility. So really, in the end, what we get is the final piece of the connectivity puzzle, and that's the, uh, the convergence between devices on the shop floor, the operational technology, OT area, and the IT, OT convergence with the IT systems above that. So the, the final point is um, intelligence. So what that really comes down to is, is there's a lot of diagnostic and configuration features built into the network, which allow you to get your network up and running more quickly, save engineering time, reduce maintenance, reduce downtime, and so on. Um, there's also functional safety in there too. And um, we also have the ability to let you use third third-party diagnostic tools on the network too. So, for example, you know, if you're using things like Wireshark, for example, um, that's something that's available too. So that's um, that's giving you a quick overview of what CCLink IE TSN is all about. So um, now let's talk a little bit about some of the industries where maybe uh, CCLink IE TSN could deliver some benefits. So first of all, let, let's take a quick look at the automotive industry. As, um, as you know, um, those of you who deal with this industry, and probably a lot of you who don't, um, automotive is typically an industry where there's a huge amount of data and complex systems being used. Um, you know, you've got many different vehicles going out down a production line. They could possibly be different from one to the other. Each one's got different options on it. And so therefore, there's a huge amount of data that needs to be maintained and dealt with to keep track of all this stuff, to make sure that the right things are fitted on the right vehicles at the right point. Not only that, but um, as we're seeing going forward now, traceability is becoming a more important issue. You know, For example, if you're bolting wheels on a car, it, you need to know that you bolted them on properly. So you know, maybe that torque data is being stored for traceability reasons. So in the end, what you get is a, is a very high data intensive process with a lot of complicated networks going on to make it work. And so basically what we see is that with CCLink IETSN, there's two more benefits, two, two benefits that we can offer here. The first one is that by having these converged networks, we think that um, you will be able to simplify a lot of the network architectures. So therefore, you know, by having a simpler network architecture, you can maybe get a more transparent process. And therefore, if you can have a more transparent process, you can manage it better. So therefore, you can start to see benefits like shorter cycle times, better quality, and so on. 
Um, another industry where we see benefits is uh, converting. Um, probably most of you know what converting is, but just to give you a quick overview, converting is basically about taking sheet material of some sort, uh, usually on a roll, whether it's paper or plastic film or something like that, and then processing it in some way by slitting, cutting, folding, and so on to produce some kind of product. And um, unfortunately, as, as probably maybe some of you already know, um, converting is an industry that's become very important over the past year or so because uh, making face masks is, is a good example of a converting application. So basically what, what we have here is um, most converting systems have multiple axes on them. And so CC-Link IETSN offers very tight synchronization of multiple motion axes. You know, typically we can have synchronization at the microseconds level. So by having better synchronization of axes, we can have better productivity, better use of materials, less wastage and so on. But then as well as having the motion control, we can combine that with multiple other types of control. And um, what this means is that um, we get the ability to combine things like motion control, I.O. control, vision systems for inspection and so on, on the same network altogether. So therefore that will also deliver greater design flexibility. And then finally, in the end, if you, can, if you have more flexibility to design your machinery, you can be better responsive to what customers are looking for. If you can offer machines that will meet their needs in a better way. So the final example here we've got is, is food and beverage. So um, again, food and beverage in some ways is a little bit like the automotive industry, funnily enough. Um, there's increasing product safety concerns in the industry. So therefore that's driving the demand for more traceability. And um, so therefore that's all about data again. You know, you, you're gonna need the data capacity to handle all this kind of data for product safety, traceability, and so on. But also, you know, if you can get, if you can converge all your systems together to get a better view of what they're doing, um, you can therefore manage your raw material quality better. You know, you can have better inspection processes of raw materials and you can manage your processes better. So therefore, in the end, what you're going to get is better yields. So um, just to finish up the, the first section, um, the other thing is, um, okay, so this is all well and good, but how can you actually get CC-Link IETSM products? Well, right now, um, Mitsubishi Electric is, is a board member of the CLPA, and, and they even announced intentions to uh, introduce over 100 different products, and uh, Misha is going to be talking to you about some of those soon. Um, but as well as Mitsubishi, there, there's many other companies who are also planning product development. So as you can see here, there's, a, there's quite a long list of uh, different companies who are planning to do that. And then one final point is um, the development ecosystem. So although maybe most of the most of you are watching this today, maybe aren't necessarily in the business of actually developing products, um, what we would say is that um, for companies who are looking to develop products for the network, we offer industry standard development solutions. So you, you can see here that there's a range of different vendors who can offer that capability. And, and these guys are all well known in the industry, very uh, established, well known solution providers for this. And, and also, you know, we've been talking about gigabit a lot, but we can also offer connectivity at 100 megabit if necessary. And you can develop products using hardware or software. So there's a lot of flexibility available when it comes to doing development. So with that, um, I will now hand things over to my colleague Misha and um, he can tell you a bit about what Mitsubishi can do for uh, CC-Link IETSN. Yeah. Okay, over to you, Misha. All right. Thanks, John. So, um, there you go. Hopefully everyone can see my slide. Okay, let me just place that. Okay, sorry, I went a little bit too quick right there. All right. Well, first I'd like to uh, say, of course, that Mitsubishi supports a lot of networks, uh, not just the CC-Link IE. Uh, we have, of course, a connectivity of uh, major third-party networks. But, um, of course, today is about TSN. And the big question, of course, is why does Mitsubishi um, uh, is supporting CC-Link IE TSN? Well, 
first of all, of course, uh, it's an open network uh, and it has a CLPA organization behind it. Um, but also, John already talked about performance and that's what it's all about. It's master to master, slave to slave communication between devices. So we have all these horizontal communications going on, but we also got high speed synchronized data exchange between all the devices on the network. So that's the whole reason Mitsubishi took a look at this and saw how we could take advantage of these things. So, um, so that, that was the whole reason we took a look at this and um, see how we can you know, get the high speed performance. We can uh, do the safety, we can do motion, we can do the standard application all on one network. And of course, huge benefit is of course, as it is um, ethernet, um, um the uh, um, we can do all the ethernet communication like john already mentioned like if you have a profinet or modbus or anything like that but you can directly access those devices and still have the cyclic communication maintained uh, deterministically of course um and that's of course one of the the uh, major benefit okay just waiting for my slide to change okay um from a connectiv connectivity standpoint um uh, syslink uh, ethernet based we can have that in multiple ways we can have it as a line we can use it as a star or we even do it as a ring topology if you really need high reliability um but like i said uh, it's ethernet based um and you can put any ethernet device on this network and this enables the iot and the whole concept of being able to do data analytics and turn data into useful information. Okay. Uh, so what about the intelligent part for TSN? So how are we using that? Well, we wanted to have the integration of all the devices in a safe and non-safe environment. Um, we, and we can take advantage of the advanced network diagnostics um, and also of course of the timestamping, which is already there. So, um, but of course, uh, other things for uh, like a quick and easy setup, auto configuration and auto discovery. I mean, um, uh, for any device, if it's already there uh, or programmed, we can put it onto the network and all the network parameters are automatically configured. So very easy to use. So what is our, um, our goals and strategy when we use CCLink TSN? It's, it's for all the devices to work together seamlessly in a high performance and deterministic operation. But in the end, it's all about smart factories, all the data that is out there and how to make use of it. So it's IT and OT over a single cable and having seamless cooperation between the two. Um, but that's you know why we are behind CSLINK IE TSN. So what I really wanna talk about or wanna show you is which products we have right now what can we buy what's on the shelf right now so um right now if we look here for our masters we have of course uh, our two uh, major lines for plc's we have our, our modular series the iqr and also the iqf so for both systems already a master is available and uh for the iqr we also have a motion master the iqf motion master will be there it just needs i think two more months um, and then it will be available. Um, and you see in the right top, we also see the CCLink IE TSN catalog. If anyone is interested, uh, please drop a question or email or a link and uh, we'll show you where, we, uh, where you can get that one. All right, so moving on to the having some performance issues there. Okay, um, so what else have we got? We of course have our HMIs. Um, we can connect those of course to the TSN. It doesn't have to be, like we said, we can have transparency over the network already. So the normal SLMP communication would also suffice. But if you wanna have it in the deterministic TSN network, all you do is put in an option card and it's there. Um, same applies to our, our, of course, our uh, frequency dives, our inverters for the eight, uh, A800 series, and also our E800 series, which already has TSN built in. Um, and of course, a new uh, servo system, the MRJ5. Um, 
Okay, uh, just as an example, maybe that's interesting as well. Uh, so be, like, why would you want to have the VSD um, on the TSN network? Um, what would be one of the benefits of, because it's just a fast nest, uh, network, um, all the drives these days have a lot of extra functionalities um, like positioning. So as TSN is really, really fast, you might be thinking about using an inverter instead of a server drive. For certain applications, that would suffice fine. And of course, doing that, that would make uh, your application a whole lot cheaper. Okay. Um, IOs, uh, we have of course our block IOs, we have our sliced IOs um, available um, and, okay, actually. And of course, uh, we'll have to have safety and also for the safety, we have our slices available. Our, sorry, our block IOs available. Um, actually, that is about what I wanted to say about the products. So um, looking at the network, you know, um, having a range of products now emerging uh, with TSN connectivity, we can now really start to consider applications where we can have the head PLC linking down to some servo, inverters, remote IO, um, but also adding things like vision, RFIDs, weighing systems, all of that on the same network and having all that data connecting to higher level systems. Of course, everything is done for our side from just one software package for your safety, for your motion and for your control. So um, very easy to do. Um, uh, just some case studies where it might be applicable. applicable. Um, so automotive, you already talked about that, John, actually. Um, you know, you have the flexibility using a line, a star or ring topology. Um, of course, huge amount of data, what you want to have, you want to process. Very easily done with uh, our TSN network. Um, we have the printing press. Of course, there would be much more motion there available. Uh, vision sensors, maybe. Again, one system one connection, one cable. All right, real quickly. Well, this is just some industries of the, which Mitsubishi is active in. Um, automotive, of course, food and beverage, the packaging. Well, you already know these guys because most of you guys are customers of ours. Um, so that was real quick about where Mitsubishi is today, which products we have available, which can be bought today. And I would actually like to give it back to you, John. Okay. So, come back to me. Share my screen. So, okay, so I guess, um, ah, just keep ahead a bit here then, don't we? There we go. Okay, so we've got the final poll. So um, I, after after all you've seen so far, I guess the question is, um, are you planning implementation of TSN in the near future? So uh, interesting to get your views on this now. Oh, that looks like some of you are actually already doing it. That's good news. Some of you are thinking about it too. So yeah, it looks like 30% um, of you may be about the same thinking about it and 15% already doing it. So that's great. You guys are really ahead of the curve. Yeah, I think nearly everybody's voted now, so uh, I think we can close that one and we can uh, move on to just finish off the presentation for today. So again, hopefully you can still all see my screen here. And um, so yeah, so that, just just to summarise then, um, the as we said, there's there's three key points about CCLink IETSN. So as we said, they divide into the performance, connectivity, and intelligence areas. So 
when it comes to performance, as we as we saw earlier, the idea is combine everything together onto one network, and then have that network operate at gigabit bandwidth. So therefore, we've got the ability to offer the network convergence, but at the same time, we've also got the data capacity handling we're going to need as we go forwards. With connectivity, it's an open technology, so anybody can make a product for it. We can combine multiple device types and protocols onto the network, and therefore we can connect everything together and get the convergence we're looking for. And then finally, with intelligence, the idea is a wide variety of diagnostic and configuration features, functional safety, third-party diagnostics, and so on. So by combining all those things together, we've got a pretty flexible, pretty powerful solution. So just some final thoughts to finish off with. Um, so hopefully this is, um, for those of you who aren't uh, thinking about implementing this yet, um, maybe this is a good time to start thinking about evaluating the benefits of TSN. And um, we actually have a, a white paper that you can download from our website. I'll, I'll give you the link to that in a moment, which may be helpful there. Um, maybe it's also a time to start considering what benefits TSN could offer compared to what you have now. And also, you know, we've talked a lot about convergence this morning. Could, how could that benefit your operations? Could there be better integration of what's happening on your factory floor and maybe what's happening in your IT systems? And, and really, in the end, you know, it's probably time to think about how could having greater transparency about your processes lead to managing them better? So those are just some final thoughts to, to take away, perhaps. So if you want to get more information, um, our website at CC, CLPA is uh, eu.cc-link.org. You can find that on the internet. Um, I know there's a link there for downloading the white paper, which presumably you guys can't actually hit right now. But uh, if you go to the website and you'll see on the homepage there, there's a banner on the homepage, which takes you to the download for the uh, white paper. So you can access it that way. Um, also, if you want to visit our YouTube channel, if you just go on YouTube and search for CLPA Europe, all one word, um, you'll see that, um, that we've got a lot of different videos on there on our channel, a, a lot of them about TSN. So um, that also can give you some more information. Um, but if you have specific questions that you want to come back to me later on after the presentation's over, um, please feel free to drop me an email there at the address there. Um, we're also very active on social media, so you can follow us there and, and see what we're up to there, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, and so on. We also have a virtual exhibition stand that might be interesting too. Um, obviously, these days, um, trying to get to a real exhibition, trade show, fair, whatever you want to call it, is not so easy. So um, we have a virtual exhibition stand that maybe can help you with that. And then when it comes to, to Misha's details, as you can see there, Misha's got all of his details down there as well. So uh, you can get hold of him easily enough too. Okay, so with that, um, I think we're pretty much on time. So uh, let's turn it over to uh, the audience for questions. Uh, yeah, we do have some questions here, John, already. Um, well, some were made already during the presentation, so maybe you already answered it. But uh, I, I'll, I'll post them anyway. Um, one of the questions is, what are converged networks? Okay. Um, well, basically, converged networks is the idea where, as, as we were talking about earlier, in, in the past, maybe you would have a separate network for motion control, maybe for just normal I.O., maybe another one for safety, and then maybe you've got a TCP IP network with perhaps your vision system and so on on it. Um, so that would have been perhaps four different networks that you would have been running on your system or your machine in the past. The idea of TSN now is by offering what they call converged networks, um, that means you can now take those four networks and run them together on one physical network architecture. So therefore, that, that's the convergence that we're talking about. You know that. that Basically, in English, when you converge something, you're bringing different things together to make one thing. 
So therefore, that, that's really what we mean by converged networks, the, the way that we can take all those different things and combine them together on, on one network. And so therefore, de deliver the kind of benefits we talked about in the presentation. All right, thank you there. Um, one of the other questions is, what is determinism exactly? Okay. What does it mean? Yeah, well, the, yeah, it's sometimes it's a tricky concept to get over quickly, and uh, maybe uh, we can elaborate a little bit more about the what we said at the beginning of the presentation. But basically, if, to, to describe determinism in a very simple sort of layman's kind of terminology, um, basically determinism is making sure things happen when they are supposed to happen. Um, you know, ba basically one of the reasons why ethernet took a long time to get started in, in, in automation you know 10 15 years ago um, there wasn't a lot of use of ethernet on machinery i mean yes maybe you had an ethernet connection which linked your machine to an it system just to get data out of it but inside the machine you probably weren't necessarily using ethernet to connect your servos to your plc to your hmi and io and so on and, and one of the main reasons for that in those days was that um Ethernet as it stood in the beginning, as it came from the IT world, was not deterministic. So what that meant was, um, you know, if you think about using Ethernet in your office, if you send an email to your colleague, you don't know exactly when that email is going to arrive on his PC. Um, you know, it, it could arrive 10 seconds later, five seconds later, a minute later, you don't really know. But to be honest, in that application, it doesn't really matter. Who cares? You know, he's going to get it sooner or later, and and, and that's fine. Um, now, obviously, when you apply that to automation, that's just not good enough. Um, you know, if if you have a say a high-speed packing jing machine and your servos are all on it connected by Ethernet, and you can't say with any certainty, well, okay, this axis is going to do this at this time then clearly that machine isn't going to be a very good one. You know, you're going to have chaos on the machine because you won't be able to predict exactly when the events are going to happen on it and it's just not going to work. So the, the first step towards addressing that was introducing some of the industrial Ethernet protocols that we all are familiar with today. So you've got CC-Link IE, you've got Profinet and so on. And, and that, that delivered the ability to make Ethernet deterministic. So now you could build your machine and you had very tight control over when things would happen by using Ethernet, and everything was working generally fine from an automation point of view. Um, but then, as we've seen in the presentation today, that, that still left some issues. Um, you know, like, okay, so you've got all the automation stuff taken care of, but now I want to add some other bits, like, as we described earlier, maybe a vision system, perhaps. Um, how can I add that? And And that's where TSN is now delivering this extra this extra uh, value and benefits. You, you can now take these other systems and you can combine them too. And so that kind of goes back to the earlier question of convergence too. And then I guess maybe a, a, a final question that maybe some of you are thinking, um, which um, kind of goes along with this, is that you could say, well, okay, so if we apply TSN to Ethernet, and it makes it deterministic, so we know everything's going to operate just how we want it to. Why do we need these industrial Ethernet protocols anymore? You know, why do we need CC Link IE? What's the point? You know, we just do it all with Ethernet. And um, the answer to that question is, well, the reason why that's not going to work is because TSN is not a protocol. It's it's a it's a mechanism, if you like. And to get deeper into the technology of it. Um, what TSN is, it's a it's a layer two technology of the OSI Ethernet stack. So what that means is, all it does is it makes sure that your ones and zeros get from one place to another exactly when you expect them to. What those ones and zeros represent, TSN doesn't care. It it has it has no idea what they are and it doesn't care. It it just all it's concerned with is getting your ones and zeros from A to B and arriving when they need to. So that's that kind of answers the question: Why do we still need industrial Ethernet protocols? Because if you think about it, so you, your ones and zeros are traveling around the network and getting to where they need to be when you want them to. But then you've got higher level application aims in mind. So, for example, you know maybe you're thinking about motion control, safety control, device profiles, all this kind of stuff. 
TSN isn't really concerned with any of that. As, as we said, it doesn't care. It's got nothing to do with any of that stuff. So th this is why you would still need your industrial Ethernet protocols to take care of all that application-related stuff. So I know that was kind of a long-winded answer, but uh, hopefully that gave you uh, a, a better understanding of, of what it's all about. All right, thank you. Uh, I'll stay in the protocols then a bit and, and skip a few questions. I'll come back to those. But um, there's an interesting question here. Uh, are there any restrictions on protocols then on, on the TSN network itself? Um, yeah, good question. Um, well, in theory, no. Um, I mean, I, I say in theory because there's always going to be some exception to the rule, probably. But on, on the on the surface, at least, um, if you have a protocol which is capable of running on Ethernet, so that's CCLink IETSN, Profinet, TCP/IP, whatever it might be. There's there's really no reason at this point why those different protocols cannot be combined together on TSN. Um, so so I would say the short answer to that is that that yes, it's it's possible. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, there's one more there um, about networks, and there's what do I have to do to use CCLink IE TSN, Profinet, and Modbus TCP IP from the shop floor to the cloud uh, in a one cable network? Yeah, good question. Okay. Um, well, first of all, you have to build yourself a TSN capable network. So um, this means that you, you need to have all the different devices on it capable of talking TSN. So as, as Misha was showing us earlier, Mitsubishi's got a wide variety of different uh, products that will do that. And then you need, you're going to need the same thing from the other devices that are handling the other network, so the Modbus and the Profinet and so on. And then basically you, you build your TSN network, so that's going to involve having an Ethernet network which is capable of supporting TSN as well. And um, as some of you may have seen, there's already things like in, uh, industrial Ethernet switches on the market now, which are TSN compatible. Like, for example, there's companies like Moxa and Hirschman who offer that kind of product today. And so you, you, you build all those, connect them together, and then um, that's kind of the foundation for how you're going to get the uh, information out of your factory and, and up to the cloud. All right. Um Okay, we're running out, out of time a little bit, I think, but um, I still have some questions here. Um, uh, one is, of course, um, <laughs> uh, with you know having uh, different vendors, how can you be sure your device will operate correctly with other devices? Yeah, good question. And uh, yeah, that, that's obviously a key problem or key concern, I should say, because um, there's no point having all this freedom of choice if then you connect it all up and it doesn't work. And obviously, you don't want to get into a situation where you're talking to different vendors and they're just blaming each other. Um, so CLPA has got a solution for that. Um, it's called conformance testing. So what that means is um, we have a requirement when you join the CLPA and develop a product using our technology that you undergo a conformance test for it. So what that means is you submit the product to our test lab and we run a series of standardized tests on it. And hopefully at the end of that, the device passes all those tests and you're issued with a certificate that says this product will operate correctly on a CC-Link network with other CC-Link compatible products. So therefore, basically what that certificate is proving in the end that you can go to a manufacturer, you can say, okay, so you've got some kind of CC-Link product. Um, can I see your test certificate? And you know they can show you that, show they pass the tests, and after that you should be able to use it with any similar compatible product, and everything should work just fine. All right. Okay, John. Um, I think it's time to wrap up. Um, just to do one more, I think, um, and that's which or what bandwidth are, options are available right now? You already talked about one gig. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um, as, as we there was there was one slide in the presentation that kind of touched on this um so there's 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 really two different bandwidths available for ceiling ietsn um the the key one is gigabit so uh that, that's the thousand megabit per second bandwidth that uh, we, we were talking about in the presentation and um 
so that's the one that's going to give you the most performance clearly because um, you know if you think about when you're in your house on your home broadband when you've got all your family watching Netflix and YouTube and whatnot obviously if you don't have enough bandwidth then that's not going to work very well and, and the same thing applies in automation too um, so gigabit is the, is the preferred performance level if you like but then from a development point of view at least we do, we do understand that there are companies out there that are developing products and for various maybe technical or commercial reasons they're not ready to implement gigabit yet so to um, to meet the needs of those guys we also support 100 megabit bandwidth too so um, so that we can do both of those now obviously you can't have those together on the same network TSN isn't quite that sophisticated you, you would have to have separate networks segments to do that but um, but yes you can have 100 megabit or um, gigabit bandwidth all right thank you um, yeah there are still some some questions here but um, I guess we're running out of time so uh, we'll leave it at that we'll we'll get back to you on that um, I'd like to thank everyone who joined us today listening in uh, of course this uh, this webcast was taped and uh, can be reviewed later on a later date if you like you'll get an email with that link so thank you everyone and uh, hopefully we'll see you again at our next webinar okay thank you very much and thanks John thank you thank you everybody